Oh, I got an all time subject for y'all today. It was, ooh, when I say it was crazy, nothing happened until a phone call happened. And y'all know me. I'm going to be transparent with you. I'm going to keep a whole dollar with you. This ain't fake for me. This is real life. This is my lifestyle. Some of y'all that's been watching me, um, you know, following me on social media, uh, or, you know, just my whole platform. Y'all have literally seen me grow from the emotional and angry person that I used to be and always blaming other people to now taking accountability for my own actions. So uh, what we talking about today is, is not just accountability, but more so, um, what do I want to say? Uh, you know, how, how you find God, how, you know, you the only way to actually help someone else is to first help yourself. You know, that's how it works. You got to look at the man in the mirror or the sister in the mirror or the little boy, the little girl in the mirror in order to help somebody else. Because we all uh, got these issues, these flaws, you know, that is literally um, sometimes is what holds us back from where uh, we're supposed to go, where, where the Lord has taken us. So, uh, you know, we just talking about it today. You know, we wanted to share a few things. I wanted to share a few things with some people and tell them about what just happened, man. You know, what happened today. So I'm just going to be transparent with y'all. You know, I ain't going to be fake. I'm going to keep it a whole dollar with you. Uh, let me invite a couple people here real quick. Uh, one second. And if y'all want to invite somebody in the video, feel free, you know, share it, whatever, invite them in. We're going to have open discussion, dialogue going on. So feel free to come on in. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to come on in. That's how I tell them. <sighs> well, anyways... Y'all, um, we're going to read from the Father's Heart Ministry, and then we're going to talk about what transpired today. So, first of all, we got to pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to live to see another day. Another day that wasn't promised, Father God. We thank you for blessing us um, with the little that we have, and uh, that little that you've given us, Father God, it means so much more to us than the big things that the world looks at, Father God. Um we're blessed coming in. We're blessed going out, Father God. We don't need the material things, Father God. All we need is you. We like the things, those things that are supplied to us, Father God, but really, we just love what you do for us, Father God. Teach us how to be more like you. Teach us how to love like you. Teach us how to be a friend like the Holy Spirit. Teach us how to be a, a young prophet or a young prophetess like our brother King Jesus, Father God. Let us walk in that. Let us Talk like our brother. Let us be Christ-like, Father God. Lord, we ask that you just come on in right now. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in, set me down, and let the word that's coming forth be nothing but for you, Father God, and uh, from you, Father God, and for your people as a divine appointment, a divine intervention, that it may pierce them somewhere that they need help in, Father God. This is what you allow us to do, Father God. We love you, we praise you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' mighty, holy, precious name we pray. Amen. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, 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 no, nah, I just playing. Oh, uh, man, today, oh, let's just go to the Father's Heart Ministry because I'm going I'm to get ahead of myself. So the Father's Heart Ministry says this today. Let's, let's break it down and make it plain. So the Father says, Today, I am the God of the burning bush, and I know how to get your attention. Trust me, in the quiet times. If you knew what lay ahead in terms of ministry purpose and being about your father's business, you wouldn't be so worried about this time of inactivity. Learn to work while it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. Rest in quiet times. In the quiet times, let my peace act as an umpire in your heart, settling 
with all the finality, every decision, not out of fear that everything will grind to a halt, but out of expectation that there is a new launching ahead. Moses was, was faithful to keep another's flocks. And because of that faithfulness, he was in the right place at the right time to see what I wanted him to see and to take his sandals from, his, uh, from off his feet to accept his commissioning. Relax, says God. Trust me and let me take it from here. God says, relax. Trust me and let me take it from here. The wicked are as the raging sea, never resting, ever foaming out of their shame. Even when my people are possessed of a Martha mentality, scorning Mary, you know about Martha scorning Mary because she wasn't uh, doing what she wanted her to do, cooking or, you know, cleaning up, whatever it is. She was more focused on Jesus. You know, she was scorning Mary. Uh, the wicked are the raging sea, never resting ever foaming out of their shame. Even my people are possessed of a Martha mentality scorning Mary, who only desire to sit at my feet and learn of me. There are things you will never learn until you empty your hands and open your heart for a fresh vision and a realigning of what I am saying. Stop asking me to rain manna down on things that are in the rear view mirror of my purposes. Follow the cloud by day and the fire by night. The things that have died and yes, the things that are stinking will have their days in the grave. But I am not the God who said, Lazarus, come forth. Stop trying so hard to bring the wind. You aren't a human box fan. And the outpouring of what I am about to do originates in me and not in your efforts. The priests of the Lord were not and are not allowed to sweat. Relax, rest in me. Wait for the cloud, the size of man's hand, and then you will run for the abundance of rain will be in your hand or I'm sorry, in your land. May the Lord out a blessing and adhere to his word. Now, what I gathered from that is, as it said, wait on God. Stop trying to do what only the father can do. Stop trying to, to uh, say, oh, you know what? I can handle it. I can do this. I can do that. No, you can't. Some of you can't. You can say that out of your mouth, but can you really? Have you gone through the process to where you can actually handle it? Have you found God? Have you realized that sometimes, and I'm saying this sometimes, you cannot find the father in the house. And I'm going to say that again. And I'm talking the house, the synagogue, the church, the gathering place. You can't find the father there. You'll find him on the outside. Jesus didn't find the father in the synagogue. He found him on the outside. He was an outsider. The outsider. And that's how he got his following. That's how he got his teaching. On the outside. Not on the inside, but yeah, he went around people. The people that had the ministry, that had the knowledge and the wisdom. Because he had to gain that. His ministry actually started at the age of 13. It started when he started chasing after his father. He started going to the people and learning the ways that he needed to learn in order to get where he needed to get to. He had to become an anomaly to the system. He had to be an outsider. Now I'm talking about that because today a brother came for me, y'all. I'm telling y'all, I got to bring it, which, okay, so this has been going, this has been ongoing for about a week. Um, you know, I, I washed my hands with it. I told the bro, like, you know, hey, I'm good. We, we ain't got nothing else to say, man. You know, I did what I did and you literally like tore me down. So in order to tell you the story, I'm going to have to break it down for you. Okay. So I was helping out this brother, you know, I was helping him out, doing what I could for him, never asking for nothing, not asking for a dime of anything. So the brother comes at me 
today and accuses me of stealing his card, his uh, debit card or his social security card. I was like, brother, I ain't stole nothing, man. You know I ain't told, uh, stole nothing because I presented everything to you. I showed you everything. I gave it to you. I put it in your hands. You did what you wanted with it, you know? And I mean, the brother just started going in like, nigga, you fake. And uh, I'm about to kill your whole family. I'm a, I'm a hood nigga. I'm a killer. And my people's in the shot. You from Oklahoma. You don't know nothing about that. I'm like, man, I'm just laughing like this dude is coming for me. He's like, why don't you tell me where you at? And I'll come right now. I'm not going to tell you where I'm at, but I'll tell you where you can meet me at, you know, and we can settle it like men or we can just let it go. Yeah, because I mean, I know you got an ailment, bro. I know you got an ailment. So, you know, I tie one hand behind my back so we can be even. We can be even, Stephen. That's what I told him. Like, like I'm a, I'm going to hurt you, you know what I'm saying, if you come for me. But I said, you know what? Let me back down because I'm, I'm walking in a new way. I can't keep on letting people get to me. But what happened is the brother came for my children, y'all. I don't play about my kids. You can talk about me all you want to. The brother was talking mad cash, like I'm going to get mad. Like, oh, well, you homeless. You live with your mama. It was like a whole baby boy uh, experience. Like, you you living at your mama house. You ain't got nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Like this. You're not a good father. And you ain't got no job. I'm like, uh, and? Like, what are, you, what are you saying that for? I know this. But what you can't say is I'm not a great father. You can't say that... Uh, uh, I'm struggling. You can say that all you want to, man. My choices have led me up to this lifestyle. My choices. I hold myself accountable. I don't blame nobody. So when you talk about me and you're trying to get people to laugh at me, I'm going to laugh right along with you. Like, like, bro, let's have a laugh because, yeah, I made choices that led me up to this. That's one thing that you ain't going to be able to do with me is you ain't going to be able to tear me down. <laughs> all you're doing is, is just like literally... Wasting your breath because I already know what you're going to say. Yeah, that's all you got to say about me, but you don't know my lifestyle. You just know what you see on the surface. And while I'm saying that, relate that to the word. A lot of people don't know that this is a lifestyle that I live now because I did the things of the world. I did those things. I made those choices. That's why I am in this position right now. That's why I'm bringing the word forth because I had to get the 10 foot pole out of my own eye before I could actually help people. Before I could actually tell them, man, you know what, brother, sister, I've done that. I did those things and now I don't do those things no more because if you keep on doing those things, you'll end up just like me, if not worse. That's what I try to tell the brother. But he didn't want to listen, so I washed my hands with it. He called up people on the phone and was like, the, the, the nigga turned my phone off. The nigga turned my phone off and uh, he uh, he was wrong for it because he was wrong. I'm like, bruh, like you literally run people off. You talk all this noise about people and say all these things and you talk about my kids. You talk about my family. You talk about everybody talking about uh, ain't nobody nothing. And I'm like, I don't care about you talking about that, man, but I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to put my family's life in danger because you feel in some type of way. Like you talking about I'll kill you. I'm like, thank you. I welcome it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. I ain't in no rush, but if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But you're not about to come for my kids. That's one thing I'm not going to play with. I don't know why people tend to always want to bring your lifestyle into, uh, you know, when y'all having an argument. The first thing they want to talk about is use everything that they know about you against you. That's the first thing they want to do. And that's how you recognize somebody that's fake. That, that, and that's why a lot of people leave the church. To be honest with you, that's why a lot of people leave the church. A lot of people leave the gathering place. Because of people always running their mouth, talking about you. Some preachers will actually find out your story and then they'll let, basically talk about your story and, and, and be talking about you the whole time. Me, I'm going to tell you like this. The reason I'm talking about this because this is what happened. I'm going to be transparent with you. I ain't got no reason to lie. I ain't got to put the brother name out there. But again, I told bro, like everything that's happened to you is because of you. You pointing fingers at everybody else, but you ain't taking accountability of your own actions. Oh, well, you should have never turned his phone off. Some girl on the phone at the time. I'm like, you don't even know. Where, where was you at? 
Don't you know that this brother was talking about you too? But, oh, you don't know that. He was talking mad cash about you. He talked about mad cash about everybody because that's what he do. When things don't go his way, when some people like that, narcissists, when people like that, when things don't go their way, the first thing they do is start pointing fingers and pushing people away. And then they try to get other people to believe them, try to get them on their side because that's what a narcissist does. Look up the characteristics. Look up the attributes to a narcissist. And you'll find out that some people got that spirit of narcissism. So I told him, I'm like, bro, you can talk about me all you want to, man. You can talk about me all you want to. Like, I know I made some bad decisions. I made some bad choices. So, I mean, my life is getting better. But I ain't worried about no money. I ain't focused on no money. The money going to cease to exist here pretty soon. People ain't going to have no job. What you going to do then? What you going to do then? When the money ain't here no more. When the green that you want to get ain't even going to exist no more. When you literally going to have to have everything on the card or take the mark of the beast. Oh, amen, windows and walls. Ain't nobody talking about that. Because that's what it's gearing towards. That's what this whole pandemic, coronavirus, is all about. New world order. Shortness of change. Oh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just a little bitty thing. There's a major thing that's going to happen sooner or later. They're just getting you ready for it. That's all they're doing. They're getting you prepared for what they're about to bring next. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a whole nother uh, uh, dropping of this whole coronavirus and people dying. Trust me, it's going to happen. It's going to happen sooner or later. But prepare yourself. Put your whole armor of God on. Walk upright, talk upright, because you never know when your day is going to come. You never know. You need to do the things that's right right now and not later. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. We don't fail to plan. Or we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. Again, we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. We just be going through about things. Well, I'll tell you, man, I'm already ready for it. When it's my time to go, I welcome it. I welcome it because I don't want to be here. But while I'm here, I'm going to enjoy every day like it's my last. I'm going to talk right. I'm going to do right. Am I going to be perfect? Heck no. But a righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up eight. Because if at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. <laughs> dust yourself off and try again so man if, if y'all got questions you want to come in on the video you want to talk about anything man please feel free you know feel free oh that was just coming from the father's heart ministry you know uh yeah uh, we was reading exodus today we we talked about exodus uh chapter 12 verse 37 about the wilderness you know to go into it about how people were delivered from um, uh, Egypt and because of their sinful ways, because of uh, what they wanted to do, they went back into slavery. Yeah, we touched on that. And don't y'all know, if y'all don't know, that last year in 2019, as of August, the 400 years is up. It's called Project 16, Project 19. Project 16, Project 19. Look it up. Look it up. Study to show yourself approved. Go look it up. And all we still doing, some people, mankind still doing, is what the slave master taught you. Literally. Destroying yourself. But the only way to save this world or uh, heal the world, as Michael Jackson said, <laughs> is you got to look at the man in the mirror. You got to first get you fixed up first to realize that you've been operating the wrong way as well. And the only way to help somebody else is to first help yourself. That's the only way we can help each other. You got to get that 10 foot pole or 12 foot, 30 foot, 50 foot, 6 foot, 7 foot, 8 foot, 9, whatever it is, out of your eye. Got to get the log out your eye before you can help somebody else. 
Yeah, you could jump in somebody's inbox and say, oh, I just want to help you. I want to help you. You can't help nobody until you first help yourself. You can help people all you want to. But when life happens to you, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to keep on pushing people away, uh, pushing people away and blaming them for your shortcomings? Or are you going to say, I'm the problem? People also need to understand we are put here for each other. Yes, we are. Your story, the things that you went through is not for you, but for somebody else. So they don't have to do what you used to do. They don't have to talk the way you used to talk, but they can learn a new way. It's really for our children. It's for those that are grown ups in age, but still have little girls and little boys in a grown-up's body. Amen, windows and walls. That's what it's for. That's why it tells us not to do certain things. The word tells us not to do certain things. And it's always, I'm telling y'all, to be honest with y'all, it's always talking about sex. Always talking about sex. Sinful nature, the fleshly things. Because those things is what put us in this predicament. Amen, windows and walls. Because of our disobedience. And now that we know better, we must do better. But because we know better, we have to teach our children. But you can't teach your children this if you're still doing this. You can tell them to stop doing something all day, but if you're still doing it, you still got the 10-foot pole in your eye, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You cannot... Lead somebody else out of something that you still doing because they see you. They will know you by your fruits. That's the problem with it today. Even in the, in the church, the synagogue, whatever y'all want to call it. I don't know what y'all call it. I call it a bunch of things because it's that. And in the synagogue, the church, the gathering place, the organization, the Sadducees and Pharisees are in there. Just the same as it was when Jesus was there. And that's why Jesus didn't go up in there. Because you ain't going to find the father up in there. You're going to find the father on the outside. Because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You can't compartmentalize God. You can't just put God into a box. Into a house. Because God is everywhere. God is inside of you. He's inside of me. He's inside of everyone because he's omnipresent. His spirit lives in each and every one of us. That's why it says, where two or three are gathered, there my father is also. God tells, it's the synagogue of Satan. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But again, where two or three are gathered, there my father is also. Can't hear me. You can't hear me. What? How you can't hear me? You just was typing stuff in. So, I mean, you, you can hear me, right? <laughs> uh, but again, you know, where two or three are gathered, there my father is also. Why? Because the father lives in us, around us, just the same as our brother, King Jesus. He said, I am the father and the Father is me. So in order for that to happen, you first have to surrender your life because your life is not your own. Oh, the volume went out. I don't, I don't know if it's on your end or my end. But you have to surrender. You have to first surrender. And it's a tough thing. This is a tough walk. This is a tough calling. Because you have to give away everything. Like, you have to learn a new way. You have to unlearn what, like, you can remember those things, but you have to stop operating that way. You have to give it all up. Sacrifice. Surrender. This ain't no easy walk, y'all. It's a lifestyle. 
is one that I take seriously. So when that brother thought that I stole something, I told him, bro, I fear the Lord so much more than to take something from you because that's a whooping that I'm gonna have to get from God. And I don't wanna get whooped by God. Not at all. Because I wanna hear those words, job well done, my good and faithful servant, or job well done, my son. I'm not trying to hear them words uh, depart from me because I don't know you. Uh-uh, no. So I'm not stealing nothing. I don't want what you got. I'm not jealous of you. I still love you. I will still pray for you. As a matter of fact, y'all, I want y'all to pray for my grandmother. Um, She's going into surgery in the morning. You know, they're, uh, they're going to cut on my grandma because there's some stuff going on. But y'all, just pray for my grandma. Pray for everybody for that matter. But I mean, I just had to put that out there. My family, you know, they want us to pray for um, my grandmother. And I told them that I would, you know, tell the viewers that's watching to pray for my grandmother. But again, y'all, pray for everybody, man. Pray for everybody. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for everybody. If somebody asks you to pray for them, pray for them right then and there. Don't just say it. Don't just give lip service. Be about it. Pray for him right then and there. Show him that you're standing in the gap for him right there. Show him how God work. You see how God work? <laughs> it be your own people. But again, man, you know, I just want to talk about that. I didn't want to be before y'all too long, but it's some things that's going on that people don't realize. You know, this is pruning us up for what's to come next. This whole thing that's going on is to get you ready for what's to come next. So you always want to look to the word and you want to study it. You want to study to show yourself approved. And when you're studying, when you're reading, you always want to ask for the uh, knowledge, the wisdom and uh, understanding. I always ask, invite the Holy Spirit in to give you what you need. Because it's, it's not by your own might. It's not by your own force. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Literally. So focus on the word daily. Not just uh, on Wednesdays and Sundays, but every day, all day. Use the tools to your, uh, to your tool bag. Use the tools that you've gained from somebody else. Use the, the, um, the, the counsel that you've received from someone else for a tool to help yourself as well as help, somebody, uh, help someone else. But first, you got to help yourself out first. First, get all of that for yourself. Help yourself out. And then you can go and help somebody else. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.